Decure. How, how do you? What's your last name? Decure. D e c u i r. It translates to of leather. Uh huh. Is it capital C? Capital D, capital, capital C? D, E, capital C, Is there a yes. space between the E and the C? No. No, okay. No, sir. Okay. <coughs> Good. Thank you. Larry. Yes. Question. Yes. What was your uh, active service in World War II? <laughs> it was very extensive. I signed up to continue my education at UC Berkeley. I was studying engineering. I was called into the service, went to Fort Lauderdale, went from Fort Lauderdale to Yale, where I graduated with communication officer of ca capability. I went to Harvard, extended radar. I went to MIT. I have certificates from all three of those universities. While I was at MIT, I was at the controls of a B-17 that was training some people on using the advanced radar in this airplane at that time. And while I was sitting in the front with, in the, with the cockpit, the pilot said to me, why don't I take over the controls of the B-17? I did, and it was a catastrophe because in about 20 minutes, the instructor of the young men who were getting checked out on the equipment in the tail zone came up to the pilot and said, I don't know what you're doing, but my men are getting sick. So the pilot reached over and turned the control back on autopilot, and that was my total experience at the controls of B-17. But I was actually flying the plane with uh -huh, uh -huh. disastrous results at that time. But were you a communications man? I have, I, yes, I went to, uh, I went through uh, Harvard, no, I went to Yale, I have a certificate from Yale, communications, Harvard, radar, MIT radar, I went to uh, Great Bend, Kansas, and I was shipped to Puerto Rico, where I set up a total maintenance facility for the planes that were going to fly into Japan from the Marianas Group. And this, because it was the same distance from the Middle West to Puerto Rico and back. So we, when those guys left, the service. They were as trained as they could be to carry out their mission successfully, and they did. And uh, General Curtis LeMay was in charge of the B-29 uh, forces that really leveled Japan. Actually, although I haven't heard it said, I've read reports of the results of the A-bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and it, it looked the same before we dropped it and after because General LeMay was bombing Japan from border to border, so they were cooked anyway. What I I would couldn't say that we didn't need to drop the A bomb and gave the Emperor an excuse to tell the warlords let's pack it in, we're not going to win this, which he did. And uh, MacArthur arm twisted, so that was the end of the war. Uh -huh. But um, Do you have any recriminations about America bombing Japan? I have none whatsoever. We didn't start it. We wouldn't, we gave them the opportunity to quit. They didn't take advantage of it, so we put the convincer, the nuclear yeah. weapons. Actually, I've read reports about the results in Japan of nuclear bombing, and it didn't look that much different after the nuclear bombs as before. General LeMay, he really, he went from border to border. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> he came to look at our facility where we put the bomb parts together. Uh -huh. And he just had one comment, he said, he saw it, but he didn't believe it. But uh, 
What, what, what was your involvement in getting that bomb on that plane? Well, I put together the fusing system for the Nagasaki bomb. The fusing system? The total fusing system. I had to put assemble all the parts. I had to test it. I had to make sure that it would go off at the proper time in its trajectory. So I, how, how should I say, I put the fusing system together. I've got the papers from the Navy man who was in charge designating me as the person who could do this job. Who could do this. Yeah, you yeah. should do this job. Uh -huh. Why was it different between the, uh, uh, what, was the, what was the name of the first bomb? Well, it was... Little Boy? Yeah, Fat, yeah. Little Boy. Yeah. What, well, was the, what was the difference between the, 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 between the ingredient in that was yeah. uranium-235. Right. The active ingredient in the Nagasaki bomb was plutonium-238. It required different fusing? Well... Yeah, yeah. And why did they uh, change the recipe between the bombs? The bomb uh, that dropped on Nagasaki was more efficient, and it, it was they g were able to procure more active ingredients. They had a lot of uh, uh, plutonium to pack in afterwards, they didn't have much U-235. So it was a, the amount of fissionable material uh -huh. that was available. Did you track what Germany was doing, their race to, for the atomic bomb also? They, there was a gal in, in Germany by the name of Lisa Meitner who first determined that the uranium would fission it would fission and cause this great explosion and the destruction that it did. So it was going on in Germany. Um, we had no idea what was going on because oh, no. we didn't have <coughs> security, we didn't have spies or whatever. But we were ready to drop bombs again and again and again. It wasn't gonna, there was no question about it. We had the capability. Germany didn't have the capability to deliver weapons if they produced them, and we never really determined that they did, in fact, produce them. But the, <coughs> but the, the mechanics or the technology of providing a U-235 or a plutonium-238 bomb was demonstrated. They had a, a large facility in the state of Washington and they also had one in uh, Virginia or somewhere. I don't, I don't remember exactly where. Uh -huh. But we went with technology that we knew was going to work. So after seeing what happened and how the, how the war evolved, how do you feel about the movement now that's uh, anti-war and certainly uh, uh, anti-nukes? Like Obama tried, President Obama tried uh, to uh, bring down uh, uh, American nukes and the, the idea of uh, uh, a nuclear reduction ar around the world, starting with America. Well, I don't... How I feel about it is if we disarm, we are vulnerable. We can have them and not use them. As a matter of fact, we don't want to use them. Uh, the General Tibbet's son is in, as I say, he's in Florida now, and there are planes flying around the world armed with nuclear weapons. So we could use them if a flashpoint is identified anywhere on the globe. And I, my, my concern is, I don't really have a concern. I believe it's in good hands because we have a reunion. We've had reunions every year of the, of the group that put the bomb together and dropped them. And General LeMay, his son, has been there. And my son and I have had conversations with him. We have 
as you and I speak, the best deterrent force in the world anywhere. And we are watching everybody else also. So if any threat becomes evident to us, we will react accordingly. But there hasn't been any. We are ready, and uh, we're, we're the t top of king of the hill, if, if you will. Thank you very much. Beautiful. And I'd like to welcome you all to our wonderful event.